Okay guys, I decided I wanted to go ahead and see if I can uh, remount this Sharp Image chassis back inside the Donkey Kong here and made it back up with the tube that it originally had. And uh, it's just a matter of mounting it to the board that the uh, original Sanyo 20EZ used to be on. I mean, this thing might have had a couple of monitors since then. And um, there's, I see a few screw holes that have been put in there. I think one was from a, a VGA converter board that my friend had had in there at one time. But uh, there's only two or three holes in there. I'm just going to try to center it up and uh, I'm going to leave that original sticker visible. That was from the controls for the original Sanyo 20EZ. In case this is ever converted back, just might as well leave that as kind of a part of history there. And um, I just uh, did some quick measurements with my tape measure and I cut me a couple of pieces of cardboard out. And uh, I've got it to where I can just take these in there temporarily and I'm going to uh, use these to evenly space out uh, my my chassis here and uh, I just did the measurements for the width of it and how far I want to offset it from the front and I'm just going to put the cardboard in there temporarily just to help me kind of line it up and uh, then I can pull it back off because I'm just going to stick it on there with some invisible tape here but uh, that's just where I did my figures on you know what my offset was going to be from the left and the right and the front and everything and uh, you don't have to be that specific I just wanted it to look centered and I wanted to make sure like my degaussing wire here for the monitor was going to reach. So I did a, just a couple of little preliminary calculations to make sure it was going to reach its connecting point. And, uh, you know, the same thing for the, uh, the uh, coils on the tube there. I wanted to make sure that, you know, my horizontal and my vertical coils would be able to reach and plug up. And uh, I kind of doubt anywhere that it would you know, be right under the tube there that, you know, it would be too far away because those are pretty long wires. But let me go ahead and uh, just get those taped into place and then I'll come back and show you some more. Okay, you can see there I just used the tape and just temporarily stuck, stuck those pieces of cardboard in there. And uh, I think those are like six and three eighths off of each side of the inside of the cabinet. So six and uh, three eighths inches. And then down there, I'm just about an inch and a quarter up, just enough to kind of leave that little original label exposed. And uh, in between those is where my chassis is going to go. Now that's just, you know, a little bit of figures there, nothing much. And that just kind of keeps me centered up. And I just think it, it would look good right in the center. And, you know, all my cables would reach and everything. So hopefully, you know, my uh, second anode wire will have plenty of length. Usually they do. And uh, if not, I'll just have to take it out and start over again. But uh, what I'm going to do, um, basically just have sheetrock screws here. And you can use wood screws or whatever, but I'll tell you what, sheetrock screws are pretty universal screws for, for anything to do with wood. Um, they say they don't have a lot of shear strength, but <laughs> I'm not putting a deck together with them. So they're cheap, and I usually have tons of them laying around. And I'm using these little spacers here. These spacers, I think they came with uh, an old coffee maker kit I had a long time ago, and they've been in my toolbox forever. So I just keep using them for projects like this. And those four match up, and I think that'll go down into the wood. Let's see if we can focus up here. That ought to go down into the wood and uh, work without any trouble. And that'll give plenty of support. The uh, chassis has got a mounting point here. And similar one there, another one over here, and the fourth one right there. So this already came with this little metal pan supporting the uh, circuit board, and it's built into everything that supports the flyback, and it's got your big resistor on there, and all of that is probably a ground plane. And, um, you know... We're just going to mount it in there like that. Nothing fancy. I, I wanted to offset it off the wood slightly. That's why I'm using these spacers. Just to give a slight bit of airflow under the circuit board. And, um, you know, I think that's better than just smothering it by mounting it straight down. Because there'd be no airflow underneath there at all. And, you know, this chassis does have, I think, uh, one or two components underneath it. Just like the K7000s would sometimes come from the factory with, like, you know, a little resistor or something other on the bottom. But, uh, you know, I just, I just want some clearance under there for airflow reasons. 
Okay guys, I did go ahead and make me some uh, little starter holes in here. See if this will focus. Trying to get on my marks. I don't know if you can see. I had marks where the holes need to be for the mounting points on the chassis. There's one down there and one up there. So I got most of them. It's a little hard to get because of the CRT in the way. And uh, I have discharged this, but I was still a little nervous because I was getting close to it with the housing of my drill. But anyway, I just wanted some, uh, just some pilot holes because I started to run this one without a pilot hole. And I don't know if you can tell, but it started to chip out kind of bad. And I said, I don't want all those splinters in the cabinet. So I just used the uh, drills and made me some starter holes there and uh, got my vacuum cleaner out and ran it while I was making the little starter holes. So this is gonna help me start running these screws down. All right, guys, we got the chassis mounted back in or mounted in, it's never been in this cabinet. But you can see, see if I can get close. Oh, got them mounted in there with our spacers. Everything lined up pretty good. Sorry about that. Oh, got a cat clawing at the door. I guess it's like, hey, you got me up at 4 a.m. I'm like, yep, yeah, sure do. Let's see if I can let you see underneath here. Yeah, you can get a, a view of it right there. You see how it kind of elevates it off of the board there? I just wanted that just for some airspace underneath the chassis. And like I say, excuse the dustiness, this cabinet, it still needs a good throw of cleaning out. I want to take it out on the porch once I get this installed and uh, blow residual dust out of it and just give it a bit of a wipe down. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hook up the anode cap and uh, make the connections I can, like, you know, the degal circuit and stuff like that and the uh, coils and stuff and, and just get the connections made that I can just so that stuff's not hanging in there. Okay, just in case there is a spark, maybe you'll see it. I need to go ahead and make sure I don't zap myself. This tube should not have any charge on it, but, you know, we're going to find out. I've got the clip end of this wire that's hooked to the screwdriver up there on the... Let's see if I can get it. Well, I don't know if you can see, but it's up there on the frame of the tube, the new frame that we modified. And it's connected to the DAG on the uh, outside of the CRT here through those little fingers. And so if we short this to the anode hole there, if there's any charge left over, residual charge, it should take care of it. But let's see. Don't, ooh, you know what? No, I thought I heard a little pop, but it's the, it's the cord against the wood there. <laughs> so yeah, this is nothing. So there's no charge on there. But anyway, now we can safely hook up the second anode wire. Okay, I've got most of all my connections made. I think about the only thing that's not connected is power, which I have got to run a new power lead up and I've got to get something to interface with this or modify this for the power. I've got cats going crazy on the porch out there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, we've got our um, remote adjustment board. It was already hooked up, never did disconnect it, so it's connected. Um, let's see. Of course, got our anode connected, second anode. Um, we've got, let's see, can you see way back there? Let's see if I can zoom in. Connector in the middle of your screen, there is your decals. It's connected. While we're here, we're gonna make a little brief stop right there. And you see, you've got your yoke coils connected there. I was a little worried about that because it looked really close. Usually you can see the difference in thickness of the wires. And if you notice, that red is thick, but the blue, green, and yellow, the green and yellow is for the vertical coil, I believe. Um, they're all the same gauge. Usually the uh, horizontal, which would be in this case, I think the blue and the red, will be thicker gauge. 
Well, the red's thicker gauge, but the blue is the same gauge as the green and the yellow. May not be evident in this video, but trust me. But the closer I looked, I did say, okay, well, I see the, uh, the keyed spot. You can see that there's a little more space between the two horizontal yoke wires, the blue and the red. So I made sure I got that on correct. It wouldn't go the other way. There's, there's probably a couple millimeters spacing difference between the red and blue and uh, the, the blue and the green and the yellow are a little closer. So that kind of keys you so you don't mess up and, and hook up the wrong coil to the wrong two pins coming out of the PCB. Let's go back out to 1X. Okay. Let's see, what else? Uh, neck board. Yeah, got the neck board connected, no problem. Glad I had enough clearance here because I didn't check it, really. And uh, ended up with plenty of clearance for that. Let's see, video wire. This is your video coming from, supposed to be your PCB. I don't know if you can see that too good, but that's it right there. It's hooked up and you got your red, green, blue, your ground and your positive sync. Um, and well, it's got both vertical and horizontal positive sync there. Um, and then if you follow it down right now, you'll see that it is not connected to anything because this is the wire I salvaged when this chassis was taken out of the main cabinet, but it does need to be reconnected and it'd be connected to the jam harness that's in this cabinet via this wire. Right now it's under that styrofoam, but it's connected to a different type of video connector that was compatible with, uh, someone had a VGA adapter in here so they can convert, um, a signal to VGA from an arcade PCB because I think there was an LCD in this machine at one time and uh, this was hooked up to the video input which was just a different type of connector on the end and I've got to chop that off and we've got our red green and blue here and uh, well there's our ground black red red green ground there's your blue and then the white is the positive sync wire and uh, probably just connect color to color and um gotta do that let's see what am i missing oh yeah there is a uh neck board ground and this is if you guys can see it right here this is it you see it comes over right here to the neck board and connects right there it just plugs on right in the middle of your screen there and it's got a good bit of length to it, I'm glad, because we had to plug it back onto those little fingers up there. Let's see if I can get this out of the way. See, we had two on the side of those little ground fingers that connect from the frame to the DAG instead of a wire, like you see a lot of times that have like spring clips on them. And uh, it's hard to see, but there's actually a third little connection there if you wanted to do you know, like extra ground wires to stuff, you know, possibly going back to the PCB. And I was worried, I was like, well, usually you do see like a ground wire going from the neck board down to the uh, frame of the chassis. But what I did is I ohmed it out and I found out um, if you follow, I think it's, you guys can see this black wire, it comes out from under the neck board where the cardboard is. It's actually plastic on this model. But if you uh, ohm that out, it's uh, got continuity to that ground wire that goes to the fingers over there, which has got continuity to the DAG and the frame. Uh, but if you follow it, it goes down and around and right here is bolted to this large heat sink. That's kind of part of the frame of the chassis or the pan of the chassis. So we have a uh, ground continuity from the chassis to the neck board and to the frame through those little fingers and everything. So everything's grounded. And I think that's about it guys. Like I said, I just need to get this, the, the power sorted out there for that. And uh, we can get either the 60 in one board that I've got to probably put in this cabinet till I get the original Donkey Kong functioning, or we can take a Mortal Kombat board or one of the other JAMA PCBs and just test this cabinet out and make sure this monitor is still working. I've got high hopes for it, so I hope we don't have to do nothing to it. If so, maybe I, maybe just a recap, I hope. And the more I look at this chassis, I mean, if you've seen a K7000, you'll see, I mean, the ICs, the resistors, everything, the height, 
where the uh, flyback is, where the uh, horizontal width coil is, where all your connections for like your yoke windings and everything on this chassis is your fuse, this one big resistor here, all that stuff is in the exact same places. So I wouldn't be surprised if that flyback is the same model on this chassis as what a K7000 uses. I looked on it for numbers, but I didn't see any that was easily noticeable. And the hot's probably exactly the same too. I've, I've got a strong feeling. And if so, that's great because I'll just keep some extra parts that are compatible with this because I've got a K7000 in the Mortal Kombat 1. And uh, it'd be great. They can just, you know, use parts that are the same and I won't have to order extra parts for this if I have to work on it. But anyway, sorry I've been rambling so long. It's kind of late at night or I should say early in the morning, guys. It's like... Yeah, it's like 10 minutes till 6 a.m. And uh, my wife's going to be getting up to get ready to go to work here in probably about 30 or 40 minutes. I've been trying to be quiet down here, but <laughs> I'm a night owl, so I hope I didn't bother. I haven't been making much noise. But we'll see you guys later.